Oh, you still have that letter? Can I see that? This is it. You still have it. This is like, wow, this is, wow. Mr. Sheck, I'm confident that whenever the DNA test is done, it will show my innocence and this miscarriage of justice. You are the best of the best when it comes to DNA evidence. This is pretty much known throughout the country, and I desperately need your help. Greetings. I'm James Harden, Jr. I'm writing you this letter in sincere hope that you could be able to help me and my brother, Jonathan Barr, regain our freedom. My name is Jonathan Barr and I was wrongfully convicted of a murder and a rape of my friend, Catrice Matthews, and I spent almost 20 years in prison for that crime. I spent 15 years inside of prison. I spent 11 years and three months in prison. 20 years, nine months, five days in prison for a crime I didn't commit. Uh, the system failed us, you know, uh, tremendously. It failed us. What happened to this female is wrong, and the real rapist has confessed to attacking her alone. They allowed the victim to be shown Mugshots. All the mugshots was in black and white with the exception of my ID. She basically focused on that, my ID picture, and when she saw me in the lineup, within five minutes after being shown mugshots, she identified me as her attacker. It was a bite mark on the victim, and the odontologist said that my teeth was the one that made this bite mark. There was DNA evidence that excluded us from being, you know, the uh, donors of the semen that was found inside of Catrice. But I guess because they had these ironclad statements from co-defendants in our case, they still proceeded. You know, we were prosecuted and found guilty. I gave up in prison several times. I fought, I don't know how many appeals I filed. I had just got denied parole for the fifth time. And one of the counselors that was working there, uh, he. You know, he pulled me, he wasn't my counselor. He just pulled me to the side. He said, look, he said, Marvin, you know, there's an organization out there that may be able to help you. I had a lot of support from the Innocent Project. They were very, very helpful. That day, I heard about the DNA testing and I was excluded. I was overwhelmed with joy. It was a great relief to be able to walk out of there a free man after 14 years. I'm able to spend time with my grandkids. <clears throat> I can hold them in my arms. I can take them to church, take them out to eat. My mom was suffering from dementia and congestive heart failure. Despite of what her body was saying, her spirit was like, I can't die until my son gets out of prison. And she was able to see me co completely exonerated on TV. And right after that, she died. She died at peace. I wish my parents would have live longer to see this, but I know in spirit they're here and they will continue to be here for as long as I am here and as long as my daughter is here and if I am to have any more children, they will live through them, you know, but I'm thankful, I'm thankful to be home. I, I can remember my first day coming home from prison. I sat up and watched the sun come up that morning, you know, and, and you see the sunlight every morning rise in prison, but to actually feel it, you know, as a free man outside of defenses, it was a totally different experience, you know. Um, the whole time I'm watching it coming up, I'm saying, I'm free, you know, I, I'm truly free. And without this organization, a lot of men and women who are free now will not have been free, and I am one of those men.